we're working on the trigonometry lectures and today we're talking about finding the area of a triangle. So we've learned several important formulas over the past few lectures and today we'll be combining them all and learning how a few different methods to find the area of a triangle depending on what kind of initial data you're given. So I want to remind you about some very important formulas. First of all, the master formula that works for right triangles is SOHCAHTOA. Let me remind you how that works. This only works in a right triangle. You have to be very careful of that. So you have to have one right angle. And then if you talk about one of the other angles, theta, then you label all the sides as the hypotenuse, the side opposite theta, and the side adjacent theta. And then SOHCAHTOA stands for the sine of theta is equal to the length of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. The cosine of theta is the length of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. Remember, we had a little mnemonic to remember that. If you can't remember SOHCAHTOA, you remember some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. And that'll help you spell out SOHCAHTOA. Um, remember, SOHCAHTOA only works in right triangles, so you have to have a right angle to make that work. The law of cosines works in any triangle, so I'll remind you how that goes. Um, we're assuming here that your sides are labeled A, B, and C, little a, little b, and little c, and then you label the angles with capital letters opposite the sides with the same letter. So that would make this capital A, this capital B, and this capital C. And then the law of cosines relates the lengths of the three sides, so little a, b, and c, to the measure of one of the angles. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. This works in any triangle. It does not have to be a right triangle. Um, in fact, if it happens to be a right triangle, then the cosine of c would, if c is a right angle, the cosine of c is just zero. So that whole term drops out and you end up with the Pythagorean theorem for right triangles, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Finally, the uh, important formula that we're going to be using for areas is Heron's formula. And that's very useful when you know all the three sides, a, b, and c, of a triangle. a, b, and c. First you work out this quantity s, the semi-perimeter, where you add up a, b, and c, that's the perimeter, divide by 2, so you get the semi-perimeter, and then you drop that into this area formula, and you drop in the lengths of all three sides, and Heron's formula gives you a nice uh, expression for the area of a triangle without ever um, having to look at the angles at all. So that's very useful as well. So we'll practice combining all those formulas in uh, different combinations and see how we can calculate the areas of triangles in various ways. Okay, the first example we're given, a triangle that has two sides of length 8 and 12 with an included angle of 45 degrees. So let me set that up. That's 8, that's 12, and this is 45 degrees. I'll draw in the third side there. Now, I'm not going to try to use Heron's formula yet. I'm going to try to use old-fashioned SOHCAHTOA here. The thing is, remember, SOHCAHTOA only works in right triangles, and I don't necessarily have a right triangle here. So what I'm going to do is draw an altitude, drop a perpendicular from the top corner of that triangle, and now I do have a right triangle, and I'm going to try to find the length of that altitude. I'm going to use SOHCAHTOA. Sine theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So sine of 45 is equal to the opposite now the hypotenuse of that little triangle is 8. So root 2 over 2 is equal to the opposite over 8. That's because I know the sine of 45 degrees. That's one of my common values. It's pi over 4. And I memorized the sine and cosine and tangent of all the common values way back earlier in the course. If you haven't memorized that, you really should commit all those um, common values, 45 and multiples of 30, to memory. Uh, so if I solve for the opposite here, I get that the opposite, the length of the opposite is equal to 8 root 2 over 2, so that's 4 root 2. So that means that that altitude is 4 root 2, oops, I wrote root 4, is 4 root 2. 
And now we can use the old formula from geometry for the area of a triangle, just one half base times height. The H there stands for height instead of hypotenuse. I know that's a little confusing to be using H for two different things, but we're kind of stuck with that in English that hypotenuse and height both start with the same letter. Um, one half, the base here is 12, and the height we figured out was four square roots of two. So we multiply those out, that's uh, six times four square roots of two, that's 24 square roots of two for my area there. So that one came down to drawing an altitude in the triangle and then using Sokotoa. We didn't really have to use anything fancy like the law of cosines or Heron's formula, although we could have, and you'll see some examples later where we use the law of cosines and Heron's formula instead. But in this one, we just drew this altitude. We used Sokotoa to find the length of the altitude, and then we used the old-fashioned geometry formula, one-half base times height, to get the area of the triangle. So in the next example, we're given a triangle with side lengths 10, 14, and 16. Let me draw that. 10, 14, and 16, and we're asked to find the area. Now if you have all three sides of a triangle, it's, and you're asked to find the area, it's kind of a giveaway that you're going to use Heron's formula, because Heron's formula works very nicely based on the side lengths of the triangle only. You never even have to figure out what the angles are. So that's what we're going to use. Um, Heron, remember, says that you have to start out by finding the semi-perimeter. So that's one-half A plus B plus C. So that's one-half times 10 plus 14 plus 16. Uh, 10 plus 14 plus 16 is 40. A half of that is 20. So now I know what S is, and then Heron says I plug that into my area formula, which is this big square root expression of S times S minus A, S minus B, and S minus C. So my S was 20. A is 10. B is 14, and C is 16. So now this is just a very easy simplification. So this is 20 times 10 times 20 minus 14 is 6, and 20 minus 16 is 4. And so uh, 20 times 10 is 200 times 24 is 48. I can simplify that a bit. I can pull, a, let's see, I can pull a 10 out of there, and that's 10 square roots of 48. And now I can pull a 16 out and make that 40 square roots of 3 for my area. So let's recap what we were given there. We were given a triangle, and we were told the three side lengths. If you know the three side lengths and you're going for the area, you almost certainly want to use Heron's formula. It's a quick matter of finding the semi-perimeter and then dropping the semi-perimeter and the three side lengths into this square root formula, and then you just simplify down and you get the area. So in this third example, we're asked to find the area of a triangle whose side lengths are 7, 9, and 14. Now, ordinarily, I'd say that's a dead giveaway that you want to use Heron's formula. But unfortunately, this example, they specifically say without using Heron's formula. So I'd really like to use Heron's formula on that. But uh, it, it has asked me to find the, the area of the triangle without using Heron's formula. So I'm going to do a little bit of extra work here. I'm going to, I'll start out by drawing my triangle. There's 7, 9 and 14. I think I'm going to try to find that angle right there. I'll call that angle C. And the reason I called it angle C is because I'm planning to use the law of cosines to find that angle. Remember, the law of cosines is very useful. If you know all three sides, you can quickly solve for an angle. So let me remind you what the law of cosines is. It says C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB 
cosine of capital C. So if you know little a, b, and c, you can just drop them into that formula and you can solve for capital C. And that's what we're going to do here. Um, I wrote 19 for that side, and of course that's, that's supposed to be 9. So my C is the side opposite angle C. A is 7 and B is 9. And so I'm going to plug these into the law of cosines. It says 14 squared is equal to A squared, 7 squared plus 9 squared, minus 2AB cosine C. So that's 2 times 7 times 9 times cosine of capital C. So I'll do a little algebra on that. 14 squared is 196. 7 squared is 49. 9 squared is 63. Uh, not 63. That's 7 times 9. 9 squared, of course, is 81. I was looking ahead to this next calculation. 7 times 9 is 63. 2 times that is 126. So we get 126 cosine C. Now 49 plus 81 is 50 plus 80, so that's 130. If I move that over to the other side, I get, um, let's see, 130 from 196 is 66 is equal to minus 126 cosine C. And so cosine C, solving for that part, that's what we don't know is minus 66 over 126. And if I take the arc cosine of that on my calculator, of course I've got to use degree mode if I'm planning to use degrees for this problem, and I am. So I'll take the arc cosine of negative 66 divided by 126. And what I get is 121 0.6 degrees approximately for angle C. Now normally I would just fill that into my drawing, but in my drawing I've shown it as an acute angle and that really isn't appropriate because 121.6 is bigger than 90 degrees. So I think I have to modify my drawing based on what C came out to be and draw that part as an obtuse angle. So I'll redraw there. So that's angle C, which we figured out was 121.6 degrees. That's side C, which is 14. That's side A, which is 7. And this is side B, which is 9. Now what I'm going for is I'm trying to find the area of the triangle ultimately. But I can't use Heron's formula because the problem specifically told me I wasn't allowed to use Heron's formula. So I want to try to use the old-fashioned one-half base times height, but I don't know the height of the triangle. So I'm going to try to find the height of the triangle, and that's why I had to find that missing angle. Um, to find the height of the triangle, I'm going to drop an altitude here. But since it's an obtuse angle in the triangle, this altitude is actually outside the triangle. So there's that altitude, and I want to find the height of that altitude, but in order to find it, I have to find that angle right there. And that is the supplement of 121.6. So theta is 180 minus 121.6, which is approximately equal to 59.4 degrees. So that tells me what angle theta is. And now based on that and this a equals 7, I can find the missing height of the triangle. Um, I'm going to use SOHCAHTOA for that. So sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So sine of 59. 4 degrees is times the hypotenuse is 7 and we don't know what the opposite length is so I'll leave that there. So I get that the opposite is equal to 7 sine 59.4 degrees. I'll work that out on my calculator.
And what I get is that that's approximately equal to 6.03. So that was that length right there that we found, 6.03. Now I'm going to need a little more space to work this out, so I'm going to go to the next slide here and just redraw my triangle and remind you what we know about that. We were given this triangle with side length 7, 9, and 14. The first thing we did was we used the law of cosines to find this missing angle. That was 121.6 uh, 121 degrees. Then we dropped a perpendicular, an altitude, from the top angle there. And to find that, we had to figure out that theta there was 59.4 degrees. And then using that value of theta and the hypotenuse of 7, we figured out that this was 6.03 units long. Now we're in good shape to find the area of the triangle using old-fashioned geometry. It's just 1 half times the base times the height. Now the base here is 9. That's the base. Uh, you might be worried a little bit that the top of the triangle sticks out a bit over the edge of the, the base. That actually doesn't matter. That doesn't make the formula invalid. So it is still, um, you count the base as being 9, even though the top of the triangle sticks out over the edge of the base. And the height we just worked out is 6.03. So now I'm going to multiply that by 9 and by 0.5, by 1 half. And I get approximately 27.1 for the area of the triangle. So let's recap what happened there. I was given three sides for a triangle. Normally when you're given three sides and you want to find the area, that's a dead giveaway that you want to use Heron's formula. Unfortunately, this example asked us to find it without using Heron's formula. So that's why we use law of cosines to find that angle. And then we use SOHCAHTOA to find the length of an altitude of a triangle, in other words, the height of a triangle, SOHCAHTOA, right there. And then we used the old-fashioned area formula using the base and the height to give us the area of the triangle. So we'll try some more examples of these later.